conveyor belts. And so as one of the early park rangers, he didn't necessarily follow all the protocols to the T. So as a few years went on, they, the, they started kind of catching wind that something's not quite right with this Mr. Cosley fellow. And actually the superintendent eventually stopped his, uh, they tried to bust him a few times and they weren't able to get anything on him. So they actually stopped his payroll. Hmm. And... <laughs> He's like, that's fine, it's a small part of what I get. Yeah. Right, but he actually, during World War One, he went with Canada over to help fight with them. And returning years later into the area, he was known as a womanizer. Uh, he asked several men, females in the area to marry him. He had brought a uh, ring back from France and had proposed several times to many of the ladies in the area and actually ended up naming several of the lakes here as well after <laughs> some of <laughs> oh helen and elizabeth and yeah yep and i can't quite exactly recall the quote now and i wish i could let me see what well here's a couple of quotes from Kelsey, and these are brand new so okay all right <laughs> hot off the presses <laughs> In the folds of profound silence, I sat, enjoying the warmth of the lazy air. After some, after a time, I arose, took my rifle, and strolled out of the camp. There was a slight odor of perfume from exposed buttercups, which were badly crushed, but yet seemed to live for a purpose. I supposed to linger a while to extrude the, from their hearts sweet odor and waft it with other dying blossoms in the air. That's actually pretty poetic. Well, for a, you know, kind of a rugged kind of guy. Right. right. Here's actually a posed picture with Cosley and whatnot mm -hmm. in there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cosley was known for his long stride and his swiftness on snowshoes. Mm -hmm. And it was winter time when Joe Himes stumbled upon one of Joe Cosley's hidden camps up in the mountains near Bear Mountain. He, he, he came across a boot mark near an uh, open river stream. He followed what was an old track to the spot where he found uh, a bunch of pelts pot or cached away. And, and Mr. Hines waited there for a moment, for, or for a little while, in hiding, in hopes that Cosley would re be returning to the camp. Cosley did return to the camp. 
Mr. Hines sprang out at him, tackled him to the ground, and tied him, or tackled him to the ground. Kazi got away and ran away. <laughs> oh, Himes tackled him to the ground again. Kazi's got away again. Himes tackled him to the ground like a third time and tied him up. <laughs> Little did Himes know, Kazi should have been in Broadway. With his theatrics, he faked an illness and convinced Himes to untie him, where he again attempted to run away. <laughs> <laughs> Not having it anymore. Mr. Hines went and tackled Joe Cosley again, tied him up, and kind of sat on him, waiting for support from another backcountry ranger. Okay. Um, I think that was coming from Gohan. The other ranger joined him, and they were to try to, the three of them, try to get themselves over the pass and over to the headquarters. On their way, they ran into a, quite a bit of trouble in the mountains as the weather was getting more and more intense. And Mr. Himes and his other fellow ranger that joined him kind of were getting lost. Cosley, being the good man he was, said, All right, boys, follow me. I know where we're going. Uh -oh. And helped them get across. And, and they got, he, he brought himself into the headquarters, helping get the other rangers, showing them the way. Because he knew this land definitely like the back of his hand. And... He was prosecuted, fined only a couple hundred dollars, sentenced to some jail time. Uh, was it, He figured out how to do some more theatrics with the judge and stuff like that, and kind of faked an illness to get himself released a little bit earlier, because it wasn't really a long sentence. He returned to some of his other caches of pelts, brought them out, sold them for thousands of dollars. So he was only charged a couple hundred dollars in fines, because that's all they found. He had thousands of dollars more pelts cashed away, sold them, and kind of, that's about all I know of the story. I think, you know, he kind of died an old lonely man, um, you know, because none of the ladies wanted to marry him. <laughs> I gotta try to see if I had it in my notebook here, too, the date on the other one. Okay, is the one that, that we're going to, that you're doing is 1913 at the other range yeah, station. That, yep, exactly. Okay, see that's the same year as our homestead was 1913. Was it? Uh-huh. Awesome. Yeah, we just celebrate the 100th anniversary, that's why I'm here. Oh, very cool. Yeah, we got pretty good views from here, I'd say. I don't have the <laughs> date for the uh, other ranger building, but uh, here we have a few old canteens. A uh, couple of traps. Oh, here's the canteens up here. Okay, go. You gonna answer it? Or you're gonna call somebody? <laughs> Hello, Mr. Cosley? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got, I got uh, some people here that would like to purchase the uh, pelts that you have. <laughs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll tell them to stand by. You'll be over soon. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah, it's a cooler day today than it was last week. Sunday. Yeah, I see. Last week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, because you got some of our heat wave that we were having when we had our 117, 119. Oh, you guys were bad. Yeah, we were up pretty high. Horse they take you way deep inside. It's yeah. really pretty. I've done it's both beautiful. of them, yeah. They so even I... took us to one of the old mining places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Alton. Oh, cool. Yeah. Hey, how you guys doing? Good, how are you? Doing good. Beautiful day. Yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll enjoy your hike. Yeah, I'll enjoy your hike. Nice. Have a good one. You too.